What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Couple Things. With Sean and Andrew. Wait a minute. What? You're not Sean. <laughs> uh, Sean is actually out. She's not feeling well. So in her place, Caroline is here, uh, who also edits these episodes. But this is applicable and special because in this episode, we talked to Melissa Hobley, who is the chief marketing officer for OK Cupid. And Caroline is in the dating process. She's downloading <laughs> dating apps left and right. And Melissa gave Caroline some helpful dating app tips. She did. She inspired me to start my uh, my application. Are you, an, are you an OK Cupid fiend now? You I just am. Screen time it. is I all. Can't. <laughs> can't get off of it. We're actually going to do a whole nother episode where it's just Melissa and Caroline talking about Caroline's dating life, which I don't know if you're optimistic or not about it, but yeah, you're optimistic about it. Great. Soon it's happening. Thank you to Melissa for joining us today. If you want to find out more about her and OkCupid, okay we'll link some information down below. But let us know what you thought about this episode. And if you haven't yet, give this show a rating and subscribe to it on whatever platform you're listening on. Without further ado, here's Melissa Hobley. Melissa Hobley, welcome to the show. Let me just give some brief background on you to remind listeners. Global Chief Marketing Officer yeah. of OkCupid, okay which Casual. is one of the largest dating apps in the world, uh, recently recognized as one of Forbes' top 50 entrepreneurial CMOs for 2022. Melissa, hats off. Casual. And you appear in media like the Today Show, New York Times, CBS, NPR, and CBS uh, to show and share your insight on all things dating related. So I think this is going to be a great interview. It fits right in. Uh, thank you so much for that. You're hired as my publicist slash high guy <laughs> yeah. slash those people in like the boxing rings like and welcome. Um, <laughs> yeah. hey, awesome. More importantly, a fellow Hoosier. Uh, That's yes. right. There we go. Crazy love small that. world. And, love and Melissa, it. we are so excited to talk to you today because we talk to married couples for the majority and we have a wide variety of people who follow us who are dating and always looking for that special someone. And you seem to have um, all the secrets to the dating world. I, listen, if you are single or maybe you have like, you know, we all have like a girlfriend or a guy friend or aunt or, or, or maybe it's your mom, yes. someone in your life that's single and you're like, you are so awesome and you have so much love yeah. to give. Like you want to listen because I'm going to give you the secrets and the tips and, and what we see, what the data shows, what, what's preventing people from finding that thing how to use dating apps to your advantage, not just OkCupid, but whatever app you're on. Uh, I'll, I'll, I get in trouble for telling all the secrets, but I don't care. Cause I, I think you need to know. And, and, and also OkCupid is a lovely company. They, I don't get in like big trouble. Like maybe don't tell them everything, but <laughs> yeah. you know, for the most part, they're cool. They're cool with it. <laughs> well, and I feel like we have zero experience in that like world because when we dated we were not on dating apps we wow. were set up by like a friend and the rest was kind of history so when people are always asking us about like dating apps and how to kind of navigate them i the only thing i know is like t tinder you swipe something. something that's all i know that's it <laughs> right if you missed that and yeah you guys are fixed up by friends which is so great if you missed the, the, the app boom, and also by the way, maybe, maybe you're divorced, maybe mm -hmm. you're widowed, maybe you could be in a phase of life also where if you were not there for when, when Tinder came on the scene, it exploded dating apps and that whole category for everyone. It's really interesting. If you look back historically at how Tinder changed at all, uh, it, and it made the stigma go away because it used to be when I was single in New York city and dating, you were like, oh, I met him on a date. Yeah. yeah like it was that um and now if the stigma is if you're single and you're not on an app people are like yeah. oh, so what are you on and dating apps become a little bit like credit cards you've got a couple but there's like a primary one that you use yeah so so um it, it, it is and it, it can be really overwhelming first of all dating is hard right dating is hard uh and it can be so overwhelming to put yourself out there and to know what to say and what to do. And so, uh, and by the way, that's actually the first tip is just know that everybody feels that way. Just know that everyone feels a little overwhelmed and a little nervous and a little scared and a little not enough. I hear yeah. that all the time, I, not enough. And you're great as you are. Don't wait, don't wait to do it. Do it now, download mm. now, whatever that app is, especially because what happened in COVID is if you were single, it was a really tough two years, right? Yeah. It was really yeah. tough. And 
maybe you were spending time with your grandmother or someone who's immunocompromised and you were careful and, and you also weren't traveling, you weren't meeting people, you weren't even at your local bars, maybe like in the same way that you were mm -hmm. pre-COVID, right? And so what's happened is on OkCupid and all of these apps, you have so many people that have never tried it and they're like, they're ready and they're really yeah. motivated. So this yeah. is maybe the best time to join any dating app out there in years. Wow. I'm Wait, sold. I'm I, sold. I'm downloading it right now. I have, a I have so many questions. I have like a million popping up in my head Fire, because I this is it. so new to us. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm going to. Do it. Um, you don't have to use names, but I would love to know, one, how OkCupid is different than the others, but what are the stigmas or some of the stigmas out there with particular apps? Yes, totally. Okay, so... Uh, what makes OkCupid okay unique and why I encourage people to try is number one, we're free. Um, some apps out there, you can't do anything without yeah. paying or they'll give you like three. I, I don't like when apps do this. Like here's three free days, but give us your credit card because we know you're going to forget to cancel. Yeah. We don't do that. It's free. Yeah. So, um, and what makes us different is we encourage you to bring more substance. So we let you determine the algorithm. And so let's say Sean and Andrew, you're really passionate about animal issues, or mm -hmm. let's say you're passionate about climate change or, uh, um, supporting, um, efforts towards sustainability. We'll mm -hmm. let you incorporate that into your algorithm, but also because we ask you about it, our profiles are more interesting and people are a little more thoughtful and they slow down a little bit, right? If you're this yeah. morning, I was, by the way, I'm married with two little kids and I'm on 27 apps around the world. So I see it all you guys, I see it all. And this morning I saw this beautiful profile that said, I used to be the partner at one of the most famous prestigious law firms in the world. And I was killing it and I was deeply unhappy. And now Aww. I, I work in a nonprofit that is trying to abolish the death penalty at a federal level. And I thought, is there, that is hot. Okay. I, yeah. you know, so that's what makes okay Cupid. Uh, that's makes okay Cupid different. Also, we're very inclusive and we really pride ourselves on that. So yeah. you can be straight, gay, young, old, with kids, without kids, whatever you are, religious, not whatever you are, we're here for you and, and in cities around the world. So that's, that's, that's the thing about okay Cupid. I think some of the other apps, listen, Tinder is skews younger. Yeah. Tinder is also really easy to sign. And by the way, they're a sister company. So I'll, I, okay. I know about all of them. Um, I think if you are looking for a profiles that really tell you about somebody that like mm -hmm. you want to know before you get to the date, you're not going to find that on Tinder. And that's yeah. not what they're designed to do. They're not, yeah. right. They're not trying to tell you, Oh, Sean, ha you know, is from Iowa. She has this deep passion for blah, yeah. blah, right? She loves supporting moms. That's not what they're about. Um, they want you to be able to set up your profile quickly, start swiping and yep. interacting, right? Um, other apps are a little bit similar in that way. You know, I know at OkCupid, if you're looking for something serious, you have to take a few minutes to set up your profile and we will not let you pass go without doing that. And I so, like that. Right. It kind of slows you down. You kind of yeah. a little more mindful. I like that. And I, I want to hear your take on what to include in your dating profile. But I first want to ask you if you could just let's zoom out a little bit and sell me uh, on the advantages of using a dating app. Like, is it for everybody who are dating apps for and what are the advantages? But also maybe say, hey, if you're X, Y, Z, then dating apps aren't for you. I, okay. You guys have done your homework. This is like a very, I I'm really impressed with this, uh, uh, 2020 dateline questioning. Well, not yes. dateline. That would be like <laughs> it was a cold and stormy night. Um, so first of all, dating apps are for everyone. I used to say, okay, Cupid is 18 to 88. And then someone told me that we had someone 104 meet someone else wow. and like get married in their retirement community. So, oh so God, dating thing I've ever heard. I, is that so, is that, that the cutest thing? Yeah. Yes. I was like, are we paying for the wedding? What are we? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When we've actually bought them a very nice wedding gift. Um, it may even plane tickets to like see family or something. I don't know, but, um, we'll do that by the way, if you meet an okay Cupid and you tell us, we will stealth get something very nice in your registry. Um, so, um, and here's why dating apps are for everyone. And this is the pitch. If you're like, I hate, by the way, I'm the only executive in tech and in a dating app that will say, I know that people hate dating apps. Like I get it. 
I get it. I, I, I totally get it. Um, it's like training for a marathon, but once yeah. you, or maybe Sean, like you're training, I'm sure you didn't always love that, but what you got in the end. And part of that journey was, was taught you about yourself. It was so rewarding. And so the reason why you have to try dating apps is it, it is because it is the number one way that people are meeting around the world. Um, when I was a kid and when my parents were kids, society was different. And the way that you met people was very different. You didn't need dating apps. You didn't, we also didn't have technology, right? The internet didn't exist. But the way that you met might have been through church or your parents arranged that. But why did that partly happen? It partly happened because women were maybe not finishing high school. They were not going to college. They did not have careers and they were having children very young. So your life was defined if you were a woman in the US and many parts of the world, and it still exists in some parts of the world, the importance of getting married at a younger age and doing that within your community was really important, right? And, and that's all changed with the feminist movement and with women being able to say, I don't want to have kids at 22. And if, by the way, if you do, that's wonderful. That's great. The, the point is you can do that when you want to. So it was largely driven by the, these changes in society and how we, and being able to get married later in life and being able to do that whenever you wanted to. Right. And so what dating apps allow you to do is to safely and more easily connect with people. Right. If you want to go to a bar every night at happy hour, that is a way to meet people. And some people like to do that. You know, I'm in yeah. New York City. People love to do that. Um, yeah. But if you, you know, if you're a single mom, are you able to even getting one night out without your yeah. kids is difficult, right? That babysitter is expensive. Figuring out like how you're going to get out. Maybe you're a nurse, right? Maybe you're not a mom, but you're a nurse and you have like difficult shifts. You may not even have a free night mm -hmm. that works out. When you're on an app, any app, you're able to be in your pajamas on a Sunday morning and you are looking at people and talking to people and, and, and it really is. And I know there's, there's scary and tough stories about dating apps out there, by the way, that's always existed around dating yeah. and courtship, right? Like we've always hated dating and courtship yeah. since like the dawn of time. So that's not new, but the majority of of connections are really beautiful and really lovely. And frankly, if you are shy, if you have a, a busy schedule, if you don't have an endless budget, dating apps can be even more helpful because it gives you a chance to say, this is what I'm about. This is what matters to me. And then on your terms, say, let's grab a beer or let's grab a coffee, or let's meet, let's take our dogs for a walk in the park. Today's episode is brought to you by AG1. We have worked with Athletic Greens now for several years. They helped us with the tour. And actually last week was exciting because Sean had the exciting opportunity to sit down and talk with Kat Cole and Dr. Andrew Huberman. You may have heard of both of them. Uh, Dr. Huberman is a professor at Stanford and Kat Cole is the COO at Athletic Greens. And the topic of discussion was gut health. And one common thread and theme of that live stream was how much Athletic Greens and AG1 can do to help your gut health. But not only gut health, it helps with your energy, your sleep quality, your recovery, and all the things in between. And with just one scoop of Athletic Greens, you can get 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to start your day right. I take it in the morning with water, and it's become an integral part of my daily routine. We take it with us when we travel and uh, it helps with your immunity, your energy recovery, focus and aging. So if you wanna try this out, this is like the one thing we would recommend if you're looking to take the next step in your health journey. And the good news is to make it easy, Athletic Greens is gonna give you a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com forward slash East fam. Again, that is athleticgreens.com forward slash East fam to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. I haven't thought of the advantages for someone like a single mom yeah. where like, even with you and I as two parents, <laughs> it's so hard to find time yeah. to go out. Right. But I think dating apps from like a data standpoint, just expanding the pool of potential good matches mm -hmm. is so interesting. And not that data is every, obviously, everything in a, in a relationship, but it can get you started off on the right foot. Like, oh, hey, 
we don't share the same values or the same religion or the same issues that you know you were mentioning that you can signal via the data app, uh, dating app. Um, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I, I I think it's it's great to hear that. You know, the the estimate now is that fifty percent of marriages in the U.S. are from a dating app. Wow, fifty percent. That's, that's, that's crazy. crazy. That's, that's cool. So it really it really does work. I get three wedding invitations on average a week, sometimes wow. ten, sometimes Popular. one. That's, that's amazing. amazing. Melissa. It, it is. I became ordained because someone jokingly said, "We want. Would you would you guys marry us?" And I was like, "I will be there tomorrow." <laughs> That's awesome. Wait, so talking about the data, though, side of the app, can you, is there a way to answer the question of like, what makes someone compatible? Yeah. And what makes someone not compatible? Like, are, do you have data sources and algorithms that are actually fueling people together? Or is it like loosely out there so you can see everyone that is such a great you guys have done your homework <laughs> okay married couple Stop. Oh, I am so impressed with these questions okay so only okay cupid has a match percentage so when you look at profiles we've done the math for you and we'll say you're 92 percent you better you better send a message to this person or swipe right and then you can click on it and see why and and that's because on OkCupid, we make you answer 15 questions that power the algorithm. We have 3,000 questions. And, and some of it is icebreaker stuff, and some of it is more, uh, is, is, you know, I would say a little bit heavier, but trying to get at, and they're all optional. You can skip, you can 3,000 questions. That's 3, cool. 000. I feel like some I would learn something about myself have, yeah. doing that. Right. Oh, you learn so much about yourself. And so, so you'll know when you see Mark, oh, I'm like, Mark looks interesting. We're a, we're a 90% match. And then I can see, oh, he loves to travel. Oh, he's really engaged in these issues of sustainability and climate change. That really matters to me. And, uh, you start to get at these these ingredients of compatibility. We also do the things that other apps do, which is like, okay, are, do you want them to be a college graduate? Uh, yeah. How far can they be? One mile in New York city uh, and like San Francisco, one mile, two miles is a big deal. In Indiana, it's like, oh, yeah. two miles, no big deal. Um, and so that's how you can know, but I'll tell you what dating apps can't do. And that is chemistry. We cannot, tell you if there's chemistry you you have to meet in person that's the only way to know we can do a lot of the work but that's one of the things i think that people expect from an okay cupid or these other apps is oh there's just no chemistry well okay i can't tell you that you're going to have chemistry with person but i can tell you the compatibility stuff looks good or or it doesn't um hmm. does compatibility necessarily mean like you agree on all the same things Oh, good question. Uh, it does not. It does not mean that. I got so excited. I knocked over. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, it does not mean that uh, you agree on all the same things. That's a really good question. And, you know, I'll give you an example. Uh, my husband's Australian. Uh, I'm really outgoing. And I thought I needed someone that was also really outgoing. It's that Muncie, Indiana girl and me that was in New York city feeling like, oh, wow, everybody here is connected and super smart and rich. And I'm not, I'm not at all. I have no connections. I don't know anyone I yeah. I'm working in tech. Like who, who will even talk to me, but I had a hustle there. And my husband is a bit more shy. What, what actually is great is that that makes us really compatible. Cause I mm. pull him a little bit this way and he pulls me a little bit this way. And you guys talk to couples a lot. So you've picked up on mm-hmm. some of those similar, those similar, um, uh, uh, trends, but, but, but compatibility is compatibility might also be a- agreeing on certain things. Again, like the climate change environment, one is a really great example. If you really believe in that, and let's say you're, you're doing, you take the tote bags, you're trying to not buy as much plastic in the house. You're, you're taking the steps that you think are going to help. And you're with someone that maybe doesn't believe climate change is real. You're not compatible. Yeah. That's not going to work. Right. Um, yeah. So, 
So it, it depends on the issue and it depends on the, the space of your life, but you don't have to agree on, on everything. Absolutely. This is going to sound ridiculous because it is, but part of me, like yeah. being like the underdog in sports all the time, like I, I played football at Vanderbilt and it was always like, uh, we had a 4% chance of beating Alabama. And it's like, ah, if I have a bad uh, oh, compatibility God. rating, I'm going to go for it. I got <laughs> it, which is bad. That's bad strategy. Yeah. Would not recommend, but still. Um, okay, so. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. What do you see as the best practices in orchestrating and putting together your dating profile? Okay, this is a great question. And the first thing I'll say about this is 70% of people set it and forget it, meaning they set up their profile wow. and then they never touch it. And you would never do that if you were applying for a job. You mm. wouldn't use the resume you did three years ago. If you're on Instagram, you're always updating it. It's it's There's a similar theme, and you guys have touched on this in the past, that people don't put the time and the energy in. And they, they're like, I'm like, oh, I'm having a hard time meeting someone and I didn't have it. And you're like, well, how much time are you really putting into like, Oh, I swipe a little bit. Oh, like, like 10 minutes a day. Oh, like 10 minutes a month. And you're like, well, how's that working for you? Right. Yeah. If you wanted to get fit or run a marathon, you wouldn't run for 10 minutes a week. Right. It wouldn't work. So, so putting the time and energy in is the first thing to remember. The second thing is at least four pictures give increases your chances of a date by 70%. So at least four pictures. Yeah. Wait, can we pause there really quick? Yes. Okay. Pictures. Yes. This Okay, I sat on a girl's trip for 45 minutes with one of my friends helping her pick her pictures. And I think it's very fascinating how people choose pictures because they choose pictures that they think other people would like and maybe not necessarily pictures that represent who they are. Interesting. And I remember one of my girlfriends, she had this awesome picture that showed her like as a working woman. And she's like, oh, I'm going to put that last because I don't want to intimidate someone that I actually like my job. And I feel like maybe it would be the reverse of like, shouldn't you actually completely expose yourself with your pictures? Because you want someone who clicks on those pictures to be like, I feel like that's the kind of person you'd want to be with. Expose yourself in what way, babe? Not like, oh my yeah, gosh. Stop it. <laughs> Not nudies. Okay. Different vibe there. Different but vibe. you are, Sean, that is a hundred percent right. Is we are absolutely impacted by this filter. Yes. Be this thing. Right. And you shouldn't do that on a dating app for a million reasons. And and you're exactly right that one way to think about that is if I look at your four pictures, do I get a sense of who you are and what you're about? Right. So you were, you were totally, by, by the way, great friend helping with those photos. And it is the hardest part. It is. And I'll yeah. tell you, there is not a single person. I, I helped every Tracy or supermodel set up her profile and she hated every picture. So there is not yeah. a person on this planet that loves every picture of them. So just yeah. throw that notion out. And you were totally right to say, but that's who you are. You, mm -hmm. your boss, your bitch, like get, like show that because it's also, you're not, you want to attract someone that's going to support your career and support you and show that now why waste your time. So showing pictures that, that really are who you are, what you're about. I have one on my profile. I did one marathon. I'll never do another marathon, but I made a joke about it. I was like, yeah. please don't be misled. I am not a runner. I hate running. <laughs> I did it for a nonprofit. Never again. Yeah. Uh, and, but people ask me about that and yeah. it's a conversation starter. So, so put the stuff that you're, that reflects who you are. On that note, I think, I think the reason probably that Sean and I got married was because we were both at a phase where we were done trying to mm -hmm. be who we thought the other person wanted us to be. And we're just like, Hey, you know what? I'm going to just be who I am. And if that's not who you like, then that's fine. We can find someone else, but it worked out. It worked out for us. <laughs> it worked out. Okay. I love uh, that. Yeah. I love that. And you but, can feel that in the engagement that you two have, that there's a genuine, you love each other and you like each other for exactly who you are. And, and it's real. And, and that's, that's what you want to put out there. And by the way, you know, they're going to find that out eventually. True. You Preach. You are only posting these overposed filtered photos and that's not who shows up at the bar. What do you think that's, 
going to, and you're, you're awesome as you are, you are great as you are. And there is a person that's going to love you for who you are. Great. Let them find you. Let them find yeah. you. Okay, okay. So four pictures. Yes. I was going to say, going at least four. Yes. <laughs> yes. Four. Okay. Then the profile, this is the hard part and it's so hard. And I'm going to give you the secret. And the secret is everybody has a hard time saying hi on a dating app. Guys, girls, everybody does. Don't do this. Don't do, I'm just, I'm an easygoing girl looking for an easygoing guy. I, what do I say to that? And also everyone on the planet is right. Okay. Don't say that. That's not, no one, what you're partly doing with your profile is you're, you're putting things that people are going to ask you about. So, and the analogy I use is like, imagine you're in like, you know, you're in downtown Indy at a bar and someone walks in wearing a t-shirt of this obscure band and you can't believe they know that band or your favorite TV show. So on your profile, you should talk a little bit about yourself. Uh, I love, I, and whatever you love, I love my job. I work as a, I would just helped a woman who works with children with special needs. And I'm like, you you have an amazing job and you do really good. You do good in the world. Put that on your profile. You know, I work with children with special needs. It's a really hard job, but I love it. I originally hail from the Midwest. I'm living in New York city. I, I, I love it, but miss like some of those Midwest things. And, 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 and another way to build on these things is to put lists. So Albums that changed my life. Da 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 da. Shows I binged during COVID. Da 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 da. Um, overrated, whatever. Um, Ozark is overrated. Debate me. Put something a little, a little controversial. People will will ask you about it, or, or something like ask ask me about the best margarita in Indianapolis. Ask me about the best margarita in Nashville. I, I will debate this with you. Something something like that, you make it easier for people to reach out. People don't think about it that way. And when you start to do that and you start to put things on that profile that people can ask you about, you will, I promise you will see those, those responses and those questions. Um, best shows of all time, concerts. I can't wait to see favorite places I've traveled to places on my bucket list, um, favorite comedians, you know, um, anything that you spend your time doing, thinking, listening to, uh, your favorite podcast. I, <laughs> I love that. It's, uh, I, I kind of have the thought that you can have a conversation with anybody, uh, as long as they're passionate and some people get discouraged because it's like, Oh, well, I don't have all these life experiences. I haven't traveled anywhere. I haven't built a career, but like, that doesn't mean that you don't love, or you don't have this wish list of concerts that you want to go to, or this wish list of like even like your dreams are an indicate indicator of like who you are and what you want to do. So I love that advice. Yeah. And, and you're trying to make connection. And I think if you go into the dating mindset with kind of just what, what you said, Andrew of, of, Hey, the first few people I meet are maybe not going to be my person, but how nice don't we, don't we appreciate human interaction now more than ever don't we having a conversation with a stranger at an airport or a coffee shop i i love those moments because it was hard to have all of those and so having that attitude of like and by the way that's why a lot of people on okay cupid are like it we're still friends 10 years later we're not it didn't work out but i had someone that met like a count and goes to his castle i'm not kidding goes wow. to like his castle and like Moldova somewhere random because <laughs> they met an okay Cupid and they had a lot to talk about and they had passions. And, and so having huh. that attitude of, of, I might learn something about them or about myself, uh, will, will also help you with all the nervousness. Right. Okay. Ghosting, I feel like is a term that was yeah. kind of sparked by the dating app. Uh, when, when dating apps started really taking over, what is, what is a nice way to turn someone down? Like if you're, Hey, I thought I was interested. I'm not, I'm not just going to drop off the scene. What do I say to you? Yeah. Yeah. And it, 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 and people, uh, don't do that enough and it can sting a little bit, but it's so much better. So let's say you have a date and you just didn't feel that spark, but they were really nice. You should say something like, Hey, I just want to let you know, I had such a nice time last night. I think you're great. Um, then you say something like that thing just wasn't there for me. And I, but I just think you're awesome. And I wanted to let you know, because you're great, something like that, or, or, Hey, 
you're the coolest. Like, God, I laugh so hard. Uh, I'm not sure if this is like the perfect fit. And I just, I wanted to tell you, cause I want people to tell me that and just know, I think you're, you know, I, I like to wrap it in a, Hey, you're great. Or like, I, <laughs> yeah. you know, or something specific about the date. Like I woke up and I was still laughing about that story of you like smashing into like the glass at the pool. And I was like, you know, I was, la- I was still chuckling about it this morning. I just want to let you know, I'm not sure if there's a romantic connection here, but I think you're great, you know, um, or would like love to be friends or something like that. Some people don't like that, like would love to be friends, but, but that is happening more and more. So if that is genuinely something you want, I had a guy say to me once, um, and we were friends first and then we dated and he said to me, okay, I got to tell you something. I wish that that thing was there. And I really wish it was, I, I want to, but it's not, but I won't accept that we don't stay friends. I will not accept it. You're the coolest. And you know, we are still friends to this day. Yeah. That is nice because like you said, everybody needs like the closure and even though they don't want it, like, even though you don't want to hear like, Oh, that's not there. Even if you feel the same way, people want that like closure for it. Whereas like, if you ghost someone, it's you either get desperate and you just keep messaging them or you get bitter about it which is unfortunate too that's right and I think here's what you when you don't give that that's the right word Sean when you don't give closure then people and especially women we do this a little more than guys we kind of pine and they're occupying that that mental space and energy or it's like well maybe he'll ask me out this weekend no give people the courtesy of saying I don't think that thing, I don't think that's there. And, and, and you're great. I I don't, you know, essentially free them up to go, you know, to go find that person. It's, it's the right thing to do. And, and COVID that's one of the interesting impacts on dating that COVID had is people are being a bit more upfront about what they want. We see it on the profiles. Like, Hey, I'm looking for the real deal. So please don't message me if you're looking for a pen pal. I see that all the time, it's, including, including guys profiles, straight guys are saying that like, Hey, I'm divorced. This dating app thing is a little bit hard, but I'm giving it a try. You know that like, you can say stuff like that. And, uh, and, um, and, and then that honesty too, after you meet or after you go on the date and you're like, Oh, you're great. Like, I wish that spark was there. And I think we're better as friends. And, I want to know that. So I'm telling you. Yeah. Cause maybe, maybe using these apps like, okay, Cupid and not trying to have the end goal be, Hey, this is a success only if I find a spouse or someone that I spend X amount of years with and more like, Hey, this is actually pretty cool. I get to meet, maybe it's going to be a friend. Maybe it's going to be a, who knows a business partner or maybe it'll be a romantic partner. But like we, the benefit is I now have this pool of people because of the app that we share interests with, or we share like, I don't know, maybe like just loosening up the, the expectations a little bit. That's right. That's beautifully put that. I think that's beautifully put loosening up those expectations. And then you kind of like take that pressure off Mm. a little bit, right? Mm. Like women, especially guys is too, but they, they just, (laughs) they, they're their own worst enemy. Like, Oh, I I got so ready for the day. And and like, Uh, the biggest dude I remember in college, uh, some of the girls that were just like itching to get married. It was like, okay. man, you would be great if you would just chill out. Like, like <laughs> I, I'm not going to get married next week. Anyway. Yes. Uh, yeah. How did you meet your husband? I met my husband in a bar in New York city. And I, but it's funny before I worked at a dating app, I was a wing woman. I was, because, and again, I think it comes from like, I worked in PR, I started in Indiana. I felt like I had to out hustle to like, create a career in New York city. And, uh, so I was the girlfriend that my girlfriends loved to go out because they would go to the bathroom and I would just pick out a guy at the bar. And I would say, my girlfriend thinks you're so cute. You should get her a drink when she comes back. Guys love to do that in New York city. And I, I, like, I, I, I love that part of it. And, and so my friend would come back and they'd be like, you know, Oh, the gentleman over there would like to, um, would like to buy you a drink. And my friend's like, Oh, and then they'd start talking and, in this one, in, in this one night in New York city, I, I, uh, I met, there was a group of Aussie guys at the bar and a friend of mine from Muncie, Indiana, one of my best friends is like someone I grew up with. And, and she thought this guy was cute. And I went up to him and, uh, basically got them talking. And there was this guy next to him who was so cute. And I go, I just hooked your boy up. You should get me a drink. And we were married three years later. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. 
Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Listen, life is crazy. It's been chaotic around here with travel and the kids being sick and now Sean not feeling great, maybe with some allergies. Things can get a little hectic. And I am so glad that we have BetterHelp to lean on in times like this that you feel like you're not anchored. With BetterHelp, speaking with a therapist has never been easier. BetterHelp is a customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. We've been able to chat online with the therapist and that's been a game changer because as a parent, sometimes that's the easiest thing to do since we don't have a lot of time to go travel to an office, sit down, you know, time can get eaten up. So being able to book it online, switch therapists if you need to, it's just a seamless, easy process all the way through. BetterHelp is also much more affordable than in-person therapy. You should give it a try yourself and see if online therapy can help lower your stress. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and a couple things listeners can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash eastfam. That's dot com slash eastfam. We'll also link it down below. Let's get back to it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Wait, so kind of playing off of that, I was, I did have the question when it comes to dating apps, I felt like in the dating world, when we were dating, there was this stigma around like, oh, you have to wait for the guy to make the move or you have to wait for so-and-so to make the move or you can't be too forward or you can't be too, whatever, annoying. Are, are there rules and regulations around that? Or would you encourage, like, if you're interested, just shoot your shot. Oh my God, listen, shoot your shot. And here's what I'll say about that. Girls, and I get it. I love chivalry too. I, I get it. But here's the thing. That really sweet, genuine guy might also be very shy. And he might look at your profile and be like, oh, she'll never talk to me or just doesn't know what to say. Why? Why put it in their hands only? Why do that? Send send messages. And again, that's why dating apps are great because you, you, can you imagine doing that at bars and getting like rejected in person? I mean, the guys, a lot of guys are like more comfortable with that than women are, but, um, and if they're not interested and they're not feeling it, it's okay, but send, send a message. And by the way, a really good message. Don't say, Hey, a lot of people say that, especially guys at 84% chance you will be totally ignored if you say, Hey, so don't do it. No one says anything back to them, but ask comment on something on their profile, like, you think Ozark is overrated? I will debate you, you know, like, or, or you're also from the Midwest in New York city. Uh, same. How did you find it? You know, how do you, do you, do you still watch parks and rec to feel like connected? Um, so send, uh, send something that's tied that's specific to their profile. It shows that you took the time. It shows that you, are reaching out because you see maybe something in common or something that's interesting about them. And here's another like secret insider tip. If you don't get on your dating app profile every other day, just for a few minutes, which is what I recommend, um, get online on Sundays. Everybody is on their app on Sundays and there's an immediacy to that. And your message is less likely to get buried in the other stuff. Sundays are the biggest day, not just for OkCupid, but for all apps. So get online on Sundays, update that profile. I, I forgot to add this data point, which is when you update your profile, OkCupid thinks you're new. And like with all businesses, your cell phone, whatever, when you're new is when we treat you the best. And we, the algorithm lights up and we show you to more people and more people see you. And so it can, it can, uh, it will lead to more likes, more matches, more swipes. Uh, so, so get online on Sundays. That's a good, a really good time to swipe and message and chat. One of our team members, Caroline is, is sitting here in the room. Uh, and Single. she's dating, she's dating. Uh, yeah. So are you taking notes, Caroline? Well, yeah. I'm curious, yeah. you, you just have all these stats like ready to go with 84% chance you get like, uh, there's no response. If you say, Hey, do you have any of these others? Can you just rip through some? Oh, if you have them I, totally. Available? If you answer 20 questions on okay, Cupid, so we make you do 15. If you answer 20 questions, you're twice as likely to get mutual matches, meaning you both swiped, right? Yeah. Wow. If you send three messages a week and I, some people are like, Oh my God, I, yeah. what do you mean three <laughs> messages a week? But if you send three messages a week, you are three times more likely to go on a date. Just think about She's that. listening intently. Caroline's listening, listening <laughs> yeah. intently. Uh, um, if you 
add more details to your profile, you are 30% more likely to have mutual matches. Okay. Again, because imagine, and again, the, the, the thing I, I'll say is like, imagine if someone's profile says Nashville 32 and, yeah. someone, and, and another profile says Nashville 32, originally from Iowa, like love the Colts, debate me, hate yeah. the Yankees, debate the me. Colts. Yeah. Uh, uh, you'll find me at the surf before you'll find me at the mountains. Uh, favorite shows of all time. Da, 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 da. Like I just got a whole picture of kind of some of the yeah. stuff that you're into, you know, ask me my nephew. He's hysterical and the cutest two year old on the planet. I will debate like, you know, just fun stuff like that. So Caroline, do that. I will look at Caroline's profile, by the way. Okay. Do you have, oh my gosh. Do you have a profile? On okay, let's set it? let's set up her oh, name profile right now. We're gonna Download do it. Today. It. Let's, okay, let's we're do gonna it do today. With I'm gonna CMO. hook I'm gonna hook her up with our premium version too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh I'm gonna be looking <laughs> she at said, your I'm profile married. every single day. I'm okay, looking, yes. Hard hitting question. Yes. Maybe the wrap up question. We'll see. No, it's not because I have a lot more. No, sorry. We have to respect Melissa's her time. Around. Okay. Um, hard hitting question. So you have two daughters. How old are they? Two and five. Two and five. Okay. Add 15 years to that. Maybe more. <laughs> um, are you going to be stricter about dating apps with them? or And how will you introduce them to the dating world? Oh, wow. That is a good question. That is a great question. You know, you know, what's wild is the way that our kids are engaging with technology. I think it's going to be like you date in the metaverse. I, I don't even, I, it's Stop. hard to even like, right. It's going to be That's freaky. wild. It's freaky. Um, like there'll be robots first. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, I will totally encourage them to express themselves and to be on an app. If they're looking to connect, uh, I will I think that we're probably all gonna, I haven't had to do this yet, but like the rules around phones and if you have a Facebook page an Instagram, a TikTok, a Snap, blah, blah, blah. Um, that, that has become, what's happening now is like, that's become the introduction to the dating app. So I'll yeah. totally encourage them to be on an app. I'll hopefully what I wanna do, and you guys talk about this, is, is encourage them to have the voice and the, when they need to, I, for the people listening, I just, did an inappropriate thing, but, but you know, having having that sense of self, uh, having that sense of self, and knowing like what what works for them and what's a fit for them. So mm -hmm. yeah, totally, totally, and okay. I'll give them a fun photo shoot too. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> what? Why? Are, why are you so passionate? What do you love about helping others find love? Ah, oh, that's such a beautiful question. Uh, you know. I have worked, uh, I've worked in a couple of industries and I love working in tech. It, it's so interesting. I'm really passionate about getting more women in tech and, and changing the diversity. It's still a, really a boys club, but, but what's amazing is when you help someone find their person, I don't know that there is much more that's rewarding than that. I'm not a doctor. So if I was finding a cure for cancer, that would, that would definitely top that. But, but, you know, finding your person can also be a lifesaver, right? And, and giving people, you know, what I'm proud of what we do at OkCupid okay is we, every step of that experience, want to affirm who you are and tell you that's great and, and encourage you to bring that substance because it does feel too superficial. It does feel like that on some apps, that it's appearance and that's it, it's hot or not. And it's this ego boost swiping and, and, and bringing, bringing the substance, encourage people to be who they are is so, is so empowering and it works. It really does work. And it doesn't mean it works day one. It doesn't mean it works four weeks in. It doesn't I mean it works in like two weeks, but, um, it, it's so, it's so powerful when people uh, th this morning, I got a, uh, an invitation to a baby shower for a couple that met and, and it was both of their second marriages. They'd had, they both had, it sounds like really difficult divorces and, and that's really a beautiful, powerful thing. And um, what it means, we know, as you both know, what it feels like to have a person in your corner fighting for you, who's got your back is incredible. And the pains of dating and the pains of a dating app and setting that profile are a hundred percent worth it. You know, uh, it, it really is. So it's, 
It is the most rewarding job I have ever been in. Um, okay. Cupid really deeply every single day is like, this isn't working good enough. We got to fix it. This isn't working you know, good enough. We've got to fix it. Um, we need to help sing. We're doing a whole thing around single parents now because we have so many single parents coming to us to look for love. And, and so uh, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a really powerful, uh, beautiful thing. So I, this is, this is a philosophical question, but I'm interested, Melissa, to get your insight. What is the, so dating, like maybe marriage isn't for everybody, but what, what do you view as a point of dating or relationships just from a high level? Ooh, uh, God, to get, to get us through life, to, <laughs> um, uh, to be there in the highs and the lows, uh, uh, to, to accomplish wonderful things together, be it starting a nonprofit or, uh, volunteering at the animal shelter. You know, I don't mean like just building a $200 million business or whatever it, it it's, it's, whatever is meaningful to you and what, what having unconditional love does for you in your life is, 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 uh, almost indescribable, right? It's, it's really the meaning of life. It's really the whole reason for being here, right? You can strip away everything, but your relationships are, are what makes life incredible. And, uh, and so powering that empowering connection is, is, is a, it's a really important responsibility. Um, I, I love, I love that question. I love it. I'm Go ahead. no, I can't let you ask any more questions. Cause she's like, this is the most home run interview we've ever had. Like if we could, if we could like just have an interview be like the epitome of what our entire show is about. It's this. It's You're pretty hype, Melissa. Yes. yes. I, well my spoken. eyes just welled up, but that is because you all really care. I, I mean, truly you care about uh, helping people find someone. You care about talking about connection and what that can mean for you. So uh, uh, this is the most enjoyable and interesting, thoughtful conversation I've had about love and connection and relationship in a very long time. And I talk about the shit all day long. So <laughs> from the today show to the New York times to like, you know, daters in Paris. So I, this is, um, that's so awesome. interesting. I, you guys have to keep doing this and, and I'm so excited with like what you're building with your brand and family made and everything. So I, oh, man. well, thank you. That I, means a lot. We think relationships are pretty cool. And we say it every year, relationships are hard, but they just keep getting better and they just make life better. And it's just so much fun. Yeah. I, yes. I think, I think marriage and just like those deep relationships that last a long time are so important. Like you hear all these self-improvement, like, uh, self-help people talk about, Oh, if you do this or you do that, it's like, no, if you get if you get married, like yeah. that's a grind and that will, that will make you better. And I mean, it, it pertains to any long-term relationship where it's like, Hey, I'm not going to let you do this. And I, I hold you to a higher standard than, than what you're yes, doing right now. I but, love that. And you're right. Yeah. Are the right relationships in your life do make you better. I, yeah. I love that. Are we, I want to, I want to come back and chat with you about Caroline's dating progress. I'm going to yes. personally coach her. Are you setting up your profile? No, right this now? is what I want to do. I want to have Melissa back on you the are? show. I want to have Melissa back on the show and we'll set up Rose uh, profile on OK Cupid live. And then that way we could do like a tutorial. I and then yes, we'll take callers. We'll do all that. We'll do it. Yes. yes. Go go on. On. For live dates. Um, this is Dude. not a yes. And, and, but also I love hearing about, I, I want to ask you guys more about like, tell me what, you know, let's talk about the power of a relationship. Let's talk about it. And I, you know why that's important to you is I deal with like single millions of single people around the world and, and, you do need a reminder of like, I know it's hard. Dating is really hard. I know it's scary and there's rejection and it, all of it, but it, it, it is worth it. And there is someone awesome out there for you and mm. like, let them find you. Okay. Mostly you're coming back. You have to. I feel encouraged. I also feel great. Like when she was breaking up with me on the dating app, when she was like, Hey, you're awesome. Yeah. I feel good. <laughs> I'm okay with this. Okay. <laughs> Oh my God. When are you guys getting your own show? You are so lovely. This is so fun. Uh, 
Uh, this was so great. I can't imagine anyone breaking up with either of you, but, um, uh, <laughs> oh, but oh, it thank happened. You. It and happened. thanks for letting me share this. It, this was just like such a treat, such a pleasure. Hey, just so people can find out more about you, how can how can people find you and uh, more about online? Uh, okay cupid yes yeah, so you can download okay cupid for free uh in the app store or on google play uh you can follow okay cupid on instagram or like hit me up on instagram by the way if you're listening to this show i you're obviously a lovely human hit me up um on email melissa at okcupid.com i will give you three months of premium okay cupid on me that's 150 dollars 150 dollars I literally, I don't usually do that, but you guys are so lovely. Anyone that listens to this pod is like a lovely human. I want to help you find love. So oh, email, yay. email me and I will personally uh, hook it up. They don't do promo codes in app stores. So we have to do it a little yeah. bit more manually. That's amazing. So. Guys, if you're listening, do it. Dang, Melissa, thank you for the time. It was great yeah. to meet you. Great thank to meet you. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys again. Perfect. Bye. Thanks, Melissa.